On a previous call, I had um, mentioned a house that uh, would be a cash deal. Um, the guy wants uh, his firm on $20,000 and there was some um, discrepancies in the information uh, and I just got off the phone with him a little bit ago and was talking about it. So um, it's a three bedroom, two bath in Prestonburg, Kentucky. Um, the, he says uh, that it's around 2000 square feet, maybe a little less. And um, he had said that it tax assessed at 67 and then when I looked on um, Zillow it showed it had uh, last year had changed down to uh, 25,700 and he said that he is a disabled veteran and that they gave him a discount on taxes and that that's he thinks that's what the deal is um, so they actually changed the amount that it's tax assessed in order to do that is that do you know anything about that they they will do that i think um i mean i've heard of this before i've never run across it myself but uh you know assume that what he's saying is true there's other besides zillow prop stream there's a bunch of places you can check to find out what it is but at the end of the day you can always call a real estate agent and say well, what would this thing sell for and the only um uh, realestate.com uh, put a value on e either put a value on it or I found a comp I, I didn't I guess take good enough notes uh, at 164 um, although the ARV is down around the 19 or 20 that he's asking for um, but this thing needs a bunch of work and um, if I could share my screen with you sure Thing. I'm not done this before. <laughs> so, You're doing it. Here we go. Uh, oh, okay. Well, nope. Oh, oh, where is? Sorry. That's okay. Okay. All right. So this is what the house looks like, and um, he's redone the floors, although he didn't really do them right. But they're <laughs> they're oak, uh, and it just looks like it needs, for the most part um paint um this is the basement i'm not sure what all i'm looking at right there but no, the that's a drop ceiling that's that's yeah. kind of unusual but yeah but you know he has he said that there isn't anything really uh wrong that needs repairs other than the um uh, He's torn the back deck off the house. It looks like the whole deck. It, it kind of wraps around the whole house in a porch style, and then it's a bigger deck on the back. So, I mean, that's got to be redone. And then uh, um, when you look at um, down here, you can see there's some foundation issue. It looks like he tried to block something up here. Um, and this is the one that you had said that, you know, probably a French drain or something like that. He said it's never had a sump in it. And uh, um, he said that it's, you know, it's probably going to need, you know, soffit stuff. And he said some shingles have, have blown off of it. Um, so that's what all it's got going on with it. Um, well, it's not a... Is this isn't a ten or fifteen thousand dollar house? This probably is the hundred and some thousand. So, but it does need a lot of work. Yeah, and I'm trying to get back to. Okay, um, so yeah, he's uh, he, he we've agreed on the twenty thousand um, dollars. He has no signal to speak of uh, there at all. I can't do an vi actual video walkthrough um, with him. Um, and he's not internet savvy at all um, and says he wants the contract mailed to him. 
um, I, you know, I asked him when does he want to close, and he's like, well, I could probably be ready in two weeks. So I'm like, well, I mean, I don't need to rush you or anything. <laughs> you know, if, you know, we can do up to 90 days and give you time to move your stuff. And um, right. I, he, he agreed to the lockbox and, um, you know, ha having people come over and look at it. So um, is he, is he, uh, the, the 20, he's carrying that back? Uh, he doesn't owe anything on the house. He just wants $20,000 cash. Okay, he wants cash. So this is cash yeah. deal. So yeah. you'd have to wholesale this is what you need to do. Right. Um, so you'd want to sell it to another investor. Probably a pretty good deal. I mean, you could probably mark it up, you know, 9000 10000 14000 something like that, and sell it. So do I still... Um, it, do I do like a double close or, or can you do assignment, contract assignments? Or of course. Like yeah, you can just assign your contract. Okay. Or you can double close either way. Well, I mean, assigning a contract sounds easier. <laughs> it is way easier. Sometimes <laughs> the buyer will squeak when they find out how much you make. But, you know, a good enough deal. Um, and I suspect you probably got I mean, do they good. actually know in that there's, I mean, there's two ways. That there, there's a simultaneous closing and there's a double closing. Uh, in one case, you borrow the money from a transactional funder, mm -hmm. and it's it's called one minute money or one second money. Uh, you just borrow it um, to be used, you know, at the exact time you need to close, and then all of a sudden you close your other side. Your transactional funder gets paid back. And then I've just got to deal with the closing costs and and stuff associated with that. Now, with the signing of a contract, um, you give them the contract, and they give you a check for whatever nine. Let's say nine thousand bucks, done. And then they have to deal with paying him the cash, and, and I'm just out. I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that's a lot easier. Like I said, sometimes your your rehabbers will squeak. Uh, you know, if you make a lot, but on a deal like this, let's. What was the hundred and some thousand dollar number there that you had? Um, from realtor.com, I wrote down 164 and $300. And uh, let's say 160, your normal calculation at 60% uh, is 96,000 less. I would estimate what I saw there, you know, it's probably significantly less, but you say worst case scenario, $30,000. Um, yeah. That's 66,000 is your maximum allowable offer. You're buying it at 20. You got a golden deal there. Yeah, that's some <laughs> That's some yeah. That's a that's kind of a no-brainer. Um <clears throat> that yeah. would be the kind that we would rehab. We would buy a deal like that uh to rehab ourselves, you know, type thing. So, um <laughs> A lot of options. I don't need to rehab anything right now myself, but um, yeah. I mean, that's that's really. I mean, I I lock that dude down as quick as possible. Get it under contract. Give yourself enough time to try and get it sold. You know, if he wants two weeks, tell him. Well, you know, it's going to take a month to get all of the paperwork and the title and all insurance and all that lined up. So get yourself yeah, he was totally time. okay with, I was like, you know, you don't have to be in a rush. And he was like, oh, okay, that's great. You know, I'm going to have to get a storage unit. I don't have anywhere to go. I'm going to have to figure that out. Well, get it under contract. Get yourself, you know, some time, 45 days, 60 days, if you can get that much. Um, <clears throat> and then yeah, I don't think that's look at all of your options and availability. And like I said, you, you've got a, a deal there where you can win a couple of different ways. The other thing that was conflicting um, that I, I wasn't quite sure. Um, so when you pull the property up, it shows um, that it's three and a half acres on one site, uh, two and a half on um, realestate.com. He's saying it's uh, that it's like an acre and a half. And when you pull it up and it shows like on the site that shows three and a half acres, it's a big uh, rectangle and what looks like his house off to the side of, of that, like not in it, but the driveway goes through it. So I'm thinking it's maybe just pulling up the wrong lot. It's like pinpointing a spot up in the trees somewhere. Yeah, that I, I don't know. 
Um, at the end of the day, when you get close, you have to run title search and all that. And they'll do, you know, if it's a survey state, I think Virginia is, um, they'll, you know, they'll do a survey type thing. Okay. So you'll make sure you, you're getting what you, you know, have agreed to get. Um, so if I'm just doing um, a contract assignment, do I need to still do that? No. All right, well, I'm going to get that uh, in the mail to him in the morning. And um, do I still need to do um, a release of information disclosure form along with that? Well, you want the disclosure. You want him to sign the disclosures. But for what he knows is wrong with the property, like we talked about with the horns earlier. But okay. you, don't, you don't need the – I mean, if you're doing this as a cash purchase – you don't need to get an authorization from them because it's irrelevant. If he's selling okay. for 20 and you're buying it for 20, that's all you need to know. Okay. No, you, you just go out and try and get that thing sold. Get it under contract as soon as possible. Um, and there was a disclosure form somewhere? Um, actually, somebody else asked too. Uh, we have seller disclosure uh, document. Uh, in Are we talking like the CYA letter and stuff? Um. I don't know if there's a regular disclosure document in there or not. There probably is not because it's a state by state requirement. I was going to say, I think there might be an example from our North Carolina closing example packet that we have in there. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that there's a, a, another form that indicates what each state needs. So I would, I would just ask the attorney or the title company for the specific disclosures needed for that state. Yep. Uh, and Brent says, and he knows our, our system better than we do. Or better yeah. than I do, at least. There I is there was one in the example. example packet. I just, I don't yeah. think there's a blank one. That's a, ge a generic one. Yeah. Uh, you just want whatever, in your case, Heather, whatever the Virginia uh, required disclosure is, you want him to just sign off on what he knows is wrong with the property. Now, Virginia, because I'm in Virginia, or Kentucky, because he's in Kentucky. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the house was in Virginia. No, not Kentucky. Okay. Um, well, then it's going to be whatever the Kentucky standard is. It's wherever the house resides. That's where you want.